continue today with chapter 14, The Equality of Miracles. When no perception stands between God and His creations, or between His children and their own, the knowledge of creation must continue forever. The reflections you accept into the mirror of your mind in time but bring eternity nearer or farther, but eternity itself is beyond all time. Reach out of time and touch it with the help of its reflection in you, and you will turn from time to holiness as surely as the reflection of holiness calls everyone to lay all guilt aside. Reflect the peace of heaven here and bring this world to heaven, for the reflection of truth draws everyone to truth, and as they enter into it, they leave all reflections behind. In heaven, reality is shared and not reflected. By sharing its reflection here, its truth becomes the only perception the Son of God accepts. And thus, remembrance of his Father dawns on him, and he can no longer be satisfied with anything but his own reality. You on earth have no conception of limitlessness, for the world you seem to live in is a world of limits. In this world, it is not true that anything without order of difficulty can occur. The miracle, therefore, has a unique function and is motivated by a unique teacher who brings the laws of another world to this one. The miracle is the one thing you can do that transcends order, being based not on differences but on equality. Miracles are not in com competition, and the number of them that you can do is limitless. They can be simultaneous and legion. This is not difficult to understand once you conceive of them as possible at all. What is more difficult to grasp is the lack of order of difficulty that stamps the miracle as something that must come from elsewhere, not from here. From the world's viewpoint, this is impossible. Perhaps you have been aware of lack of competition among your thoughts, which even though they may conflict, can occur together and in great numbers. You may indeed be so used to this that it causes you little surprise. Yet you are also used to classifying some of your thoughts as more important, larger or better, wiser or more productive and valuable and others. This is true of the thoughts that cross the mind of those who think they live apart. For some are reflections of heaven, while others are motivated by the ego, which but seems to think. The result is a weaving, changing pattern that never rests and is never still. It shifts unceasingly across the mirror of your mind and the reflections of heaven last but a moment and grow dim as darkness blots them out. Where there was light, darkness removes it in an instant, and alternating patterns of light and darkness sweep constantly across your mind. The little sanity that still remains is held together by a sense of order that you establish. Yet the very fact that you can do this and bring any order into chaos shows you that you are not an ego, and that more than an ego must be in you. For the ego is chaos, and if it were all of you, no order at all would be possible. Yet though the order you impose upon your mind limits the ego, it also limits you. To order is to judge, and to arrange by judgment. Therefore it is not your function but the Holy Spirit's function. It will seem difficult for you to learn that you have no basis at all for ordering your thoughts. This lesson the Holy Spirit teaches by giving you the shining examples of miracles to show you that your way of ordering is wrong, but that a better way is offered you. The miracle offers exactly the same response to every call for help. It does not judge the call, 
It merely recognizes what it is and answers accordingly. It does not consider which call is louder or greater or more important. You may wonder how you who are still bound to judgment can be asked to do that, which requires no judgment of your own. The answer is very simple. The power of God, and not of you, engenders miracles. The miracle itself is but the witness that you have the power of God in you. That is the reason why the miracle gives equal blessing to all who share in it. And that is also why everyone shares in it. The power of God is limitless. And being always maximal, it offers everything to every call from anyone. There is no order of difficulty here. A call for help is given help. The only judgment involved is the Holy Spirit's one division into two categories. One of love and the other the call for love. You cannot safely make this division for you are much too confused either to recognize love or to believe that everything else is nothing but a call for love. You are too bound to form and not to content. What you consider content is not content at all. It is merely form and nothing else. For you do not respond to what a brother really offers you, but only to the particular perception of his offering by which the ego judges it. The ego is incapable of understanding content and is totally unconcerned with it. To the ego, if the form is acceptable, the content must be. Otherwise it will attack the form. If you believe you understand something of the quote, dynamics of the ego, let me assure you that you understand nothing of it. For of yourself you could not understand it. The study of the ego is not the study of the mind. In fact, the ego enjoys studying itself and thoroughly approves the undertakings of students who would, quote, analyze it, thus approving its importance. Yet they but study form with meaningless content, for their teacher is senseless, though careful to conceal this fact behind impressive sounding words but which lack any consistent sense when they are put together. This is characteristic of the ego's judgments. Separately they seem to hold, but put them together and the system of thought that arises from joining them is incoherent and utterly chaotic. For form is not enough for meaning, and the underlying lack of content makes a cohesive system impossible. Separation, therefore, remains the ego's chosen condition, for no one alone can judge the ego truly. Yet when two or more join together in searching for truth, the ego can no longer defend its lack of content. The fact of union tells them it is not true. It is impossible to remember God in secret and alone, for remembering Him means you are not alone and are willing to remember it. Take no thought for yourself, for no thought you hold is for yourself. If you would remember your Father, let the Holy Spirit order your thoughts, and give only the answer with which He answers you. Everyone seeks for love as you do, but knows it not unless He joins with you in seeking it. If you undertake the search together, you bring with you a light so powerful that what you see is given meaning. The lonely journey fails because it has excluded what it would find. As God communicates to the Holy Spirit in you, so does the Holy Spirit translate His communications through you, so you can understand them. God has no secret communications for everything of Him is perfectly open and freely accessible to all, being for all. Nothing lives in secret, and what you would hide from the Holy Spirit is nothing. Every interpretation you would lay upon a brother is senseless. Let the Holy Spirit show Him to you, 
and teach you both his love and his call for love. Neither his mind nor yours holds more than these two orders of thought. The miracle is the recognition that this is true. Where there is love, your brother must give it to you because of what it is. But where there is a call for love, you must give it because of what you are. Earlier I said this course will teach you how to remember what you are, restoring you to your identity. We have already learned that this identity is shared. The miracle becomes the means of sharing it. By supplying your identity, wherever it is not recognized, you will recognize it. And God himself, who wills to be with his son forever, will bless each recognition of his son with all the love he holds for him. Nor will the power of all his love be absent from any miracle you offer to his son. How then can there be any order of difficulty among them? And from the workbook, Lesson 114 for Morning and evening review. I am spirit. I am the Son of God. No body can contain my spirit, nor impose on me a limitation God created not. I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. What can my function be but to accept the Word of God, who has created me for what I am and will forever be? On the hour, I am spirit. On the half hour, I will accept my part in God's plan for salvation. Amen.